Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Positively Trek. I'm Dan Gunther, and with me, as he is every week, is Bruce Gibson. And I think we have a really fun episode for you this week. As you know, of course, right now we're dealing with the whole COVID-19 pandemic and, and all of the struggles and issues that are going on with that. Now, one of the things that I'm seeing in the community are people who step up and do things to help those who are kind of on the front lines of this crisis. And I noticed Larry Nemechek had posted about one such person who's taken it upon herself to do some really cool stuff for uh, people, the healthcare workers who are fighting what's going on right now. And I thought it would be great to invite her onto the show and we could have a fun conversation about that. Oh, that would be great. I, ho- I hope she says yes when you ask her. Well, we'll see. I don't know. We'll, we'll, let's let's see. So uh, her name is Crystal Allen. You may know her as Dinesh from the Enterprise episode Bound from season four. You may also know her from her role in Of Gods and Men, the uh, unofficial miniseries directed by Tim Russ. Uh, And you may have also seen her in all kinds of other television shows such as Desperate Housewives, Prison Break, Castle, Grey's Anatomy, Supernatural. Uh, She's definitely a familiar face and we're honored to have her on the show. So Crystal, thank you so much for joining us. Hey guys, it's so, I mean, thank you so much for reaching out. I I, I love that you saw what I was doing, uh, giving back to the community. And that just warms my heart, honestly, that you actually saw that and invited me on your show. So thank you. It's a pleasure. And you did say yes. So that's awesome. (laughs) Of course I said yes. I'm I'm not a no person. It's like if somebody gives you, if somebody if you are presented an idea or an opportunity, I always believe, take it. Like, you never know. You know what I'm saying? Especially right now, I think whatever comes somebody's way is is very, very much in the moment. And it's a crisis. So it's like, it's a blessing to be on the show right now with you. That's how I look at it. Like, it's a blessing for me. And for us, too, because we love having you on the show. This show is has only been around uh this is what the 14th episode dan so oh wow we haven't been around long now we do other podcasts called literary treks where we talk to all like the star trek authors of the books and that's in like episode like 300 something now so that one's been on for a long time so we've branched out into this and Mm -hmm. crystal if this show goes on for like 300 episodes or more we will always in any big anniversary that we do we're gonna say you know and our first guest was crystal allen because you're the first we've ever had mm-hmm. i'm the first guest you yes. are indeed yep stop it right now <laughs> really? yeah. absolutely yeah. oh my god what a bl- i mean this is what i'm saying like what a treat what a blessing this that's i'm honored are you serious what what mm-hmm. happened to all the other people out there all the other they said no they said no yeah we just no. haven't gotten to them yet <laughs> you're you're the first one we've asked too wow yeah wow i'm honored so I'm there so you go honored. Gosh. I mean, I was on an enterprise in what, 2005 or six as a green girl, but I still have my Star Trek fan. Absolutely. So nice. Yeah. It's so sweet. They're, you guys, the most loyal fans ever. It's just like when you're in the Star Trek family, you're in the Star Trek. You can't, you can't escape it. It's like, it's just a, a nice group, a beautiful group. So when you got the part uh, uh, for Star Trek Enterprise, did you have any idea what it would be like afterwards like that, that fans would be following you 15 years later? None. No idea. In fact, I was just oblivious to the, I'm like, Star Trek? It's on? Like, I, I literally, <laughs> like, went back to, like, the original Star Trek, and I thought, it's on? It's still on? And they're like, yeah. It's on, you know, what, what, what network was it? W, WB or, I don't, I can't remember. Uh, UPN at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, I guess it is. I remember flipping through the channels and I just auditioned for it. It was one of my first auditions in Los Angeles because I came here from New York City. And so I didn't know what, like, I remember the producer when I got the job, she pulled me aside and she's like, do you understand what this means? And I'm like, "Uh, I'm a guest star on the show. Like, I'm going to do some dancing. She's like, no, but you're going to be, we're going to have you in makeup. You're okay with that, right? I'm like, yeah, I was a model for many years. I'm fine with all that stuff. And she's like, you understand that, you're now going to be part of history of start. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Like I didn't, like, I didn't know. I didn't know until I uh, started doing the conventions. And then I realized it's a big deal. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know it was, I just thought it was a a fun job. I was excited. 
because it was a big guest star for me at the time. I was young and it was fun. So, oh, that's excellent. And speaking of the original series, like, you know, the, the, the green Orion slave girl is kind of this archetype that's from the way back it when in the sixties. So what was it like to kind of play that role and, and something that's kind of a bit iconic, I guess, when it comes to Star Trek. It was, it was really cool. We had an amazing choreographer. We, we, the first week was rehearsals. I think we had four or five rehearsals before we even shot the green makeup in the show. And it was just very, uh, I liked it a lot because it was, it was very sexy, but very like Egyptian. Like we had bare feet. They put us in these heels and we, all three of us were like, you know what? No this isn't working because it doesn't feel like you're not feeling the earth because in the original, they, they were in their bare feet. They were, it was like, they were kind of part of the earth, you know, they were crawling around. It was very seductive. And I think that that's something that we all agreed on. Like we need to be in our bare feet, green bare feet, (laughs) five hours, (laughs) five hours on two hours off. That's amazing. I wanted to talk a bit about that. That makeup has got to be an ordeal. How many days did you say you were in that makeup? I, I, you know what? We did some reshoots. It must have been at least seven in that makeup, at least seven days. I mean, sometimes they were all in a row. And then other days we would have a weekend off and then go back into the makeup. So our skin could breathe a little bit, you know, it was on Paramount and it was cold. It was freezing. We were standing in these like, I don't know, Paramount has these areas where there's just no air, there's no heat nothing it's just a warehouse and they would just spray us down with the airbrush they just head to toe with just like a thong on <laughs> it was like so weird but all worth it it was not comfortable it was not that fun during that process but when we were dancing and when we were like in the roles and when we were like seducing the captain and we were seducing the and en- I was seducing the engineer it was super like You really felt the role at that point because it switched around and we're in control. Yeah. I watched that scene just the other day before this. I mean, I've seen it before when it aired and and since, but seeing the three of you dancing, I thought, you know, nowadays that would probably be on TikTok. You know, you would probably just do it that way. (laughs) Oh, we should do a little TikTok video. I'm on, I just joined TikTok because I'm so bored. I'm like, TikTok, cool. Because it cuts everything, right? That would be a good idea. And then you can take it and post it on tweet. You can tweet it or you can Instagram it or Facebook it. So when you were doing that, see, I mean, have you studied dance? What's your background with that? Yes. Yes. Um, I think they were looking for dancers, actors who can dance, I guess you could say. Um, Because, you know, I, I, for the audition, I didn't have to dance. I just had to show them I could act. But I guess on my resume, it spoke for itself that I had, you know, I danced for 14 years. So I was fully qualified to dance. And the other girls, too. They're incredible dancers. Sia and Menina, amazing dancers. We were all great dancers. We had no problem doing the choreography because we were trained, you know. <laughs> it was fun. So what was it like working with the the cast of Enterprise? I, I, I noticed a lot of the work you do is kind of guest star roles. Is, is it kind of an odd experience coming in to an established cast and working with them? Or how did that work with Enterprise? <sighs> Gosh, before I booked that show, I did stuff like Sex and the City. I was in New York, so I did Sopranos. And yes, that was a little intimidating. Um, but being green and having this dark wig on and half naked, yeah, it was a little intimidating, but everybody felt like it was just such a weird moment of the show, you know, that I think everyone maybe felt the same way that maybe we felt. So they made us extra comfortable. Because it was an awkward thing because it literally like if you see the costumes, it's like, it's very revealing. And it was, um, I, all of us were used to that because we had all been dancers, but the cast, you know, they've got their suits on. Um, they were probably like, Whoa, <laughs> like what's going on here? Like these green aliens are coming through the show and they're dancing. And what is this? You know? So yeah, it's usually not a dance show or a musical, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. So I think it was kind of a treat for them. I got along with everybody, like Scott Bakula. He was so, he was funny. He made us laugh all day. You know, uh, the rest of the cast, they were just like sweet and funny. And Dominic was hilarious, Connor. I mean, everybody was just, you know, it was fun. We, we just laughed a lot. But it was weird because I was looking at them and they're like, they don't even know what I look like. They don't know at all. They just think I'm this alien with dark hair. <laughs> it's, 
and drink. Yeah, that's funny because if you ever run, if you ran into them sometime after that, you probably, hey, remember me? Did they even recognize you or did you have to explain who you were? Not really. No. I mean, I ran into Scott. The other guys did because I had done a couple conventions with them, you know, like Dominic and Connor, like they knew exactly who I was. But with Scott Bakula, I mean, he doesn't really do conventions. I don't know. Once in a while he does now, but back in the day he wasn't doing them. So I wouldn't run into him. But then one time I did or twice I did at the SAG Awards. And I'm like, hi, it's Crystal Allen from Bound, the green girl. And then he's like, oh my God, how are you? And he would be like, like when I first walked up to him, he didn't know who I was until I had to explain I was the green girl. Yeah. But the other guys, they know me. So another thing, of course, that you're known for in Star Trek circles is Of Gods and Men, which is that uh, unofficial miniseries, three parts directed by Tim Russ. I was a little curious about this. So what was your, what was it like working on that production and, and kind of how did you come to be involved in that? Somebody recommended me to Tim Russ, maybe because I had just finished, yeah, the Orion episode, um, Bound. And he, somebody recommended him. To, I don't know, rec- recommended me to him. And he just cast me. He just called me up. He's like, hey, listen, we're doing this uh, kind of miniseries, three-part thing in New York are you up for it? And I'm like, am I going to be green? He goes, no. I go, yes. <laughs> Cause Chase had to be green. Chase Masterson. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how does that work when, I mean, you know, you're a professional actor and all of a sudden what you, did you have to fly in your own dime to New York? Cause you weren't in New York at the time, were you? No, it was a SAG production. They, they flew us over there. Um, they took care of us. They put us up. They paid us. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the cast, it's a really good cast. I mean, everybody's in it, sort of, you know, Michelle Nichols, Walter, Tim Russ was even in it. Um, Garrett, J.G. Hertzler, he played the Klingon. It was super hot. It was so hot. Thank God I wasn't green. I mean, I remember (laughs) he was this Klingon, and he had this tiny little pink fan. It was this big, and he was just holding it up to his face. Oh my God. It was so funny. It was so funny. We, we had a good time. I mean, it was a bit, it was, it was very uncomfortable, but for me, probably not. Cause I just had this little outfit on, but for people like that were the Klingons and, ugh. you know, it's so funny how this all works out because, you know, you're in one episode of Star Trek enterprise and then that should really just be it. And uh, like you're naming all these Star Trek actors because, of doing that other film and doing conventions and stuff. It's really, you've become part of a community and you know, these people Yeah, and the fans, you know, it really is. And that's kind of how it worked because here I was an actor coming into town, brand new. I had some stuff behind me, so I was able to get an agent and I was just thrown into this world because, and then I was just building my demo reels up and building my like relationships up with cast and directors and, you know, uh, productions and Star Trek really helped me because Tim Russ hired me not just one time but he kept hiring me afterwards I think we did five short films together and then David Livingston hired me for a couple short films and they were just something to keep busy with you know and I worked with you know Bob Picardo in one of them I worked with John Billing- Billingsley in one of them um, and we were all just a family we just all got to know each other and and so nice great actors I mean I didn't even realize what great actors these guys were until I worked with them and realized the the family and, and how powerful Star Trek is in this, in this town, yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. anywhere, really not town that world really it's huge. That's one of the things I've always loved about Star Trek is, you know, at first glance and it can look just silly, right? You've got three women dressed in green makeup and weird aliens with strange bumps and stuff, but the actors all really commit to their roles and the amount of talent in Star Trek is staggering. And, you know, to be a part of that, I think would be really cool. And, uh, I, I think is, you know, definitely shows that like you are a part of that talent as well. Like that's great. Yeah. I'd love to go back and be, on you know the new series Picard or Discovery like that would be my that would be really cool I'd love that but I don't know if they bring people they, they're bringing people back I don't I think they are who knows what's gonna happen in the near future are you Canadian Karen? I am yes I know it. <laughs> I was just listening because I'm Canadian so I can always spot another Canadian yeah you're from uh 
Calgary, if I remember correctly, right? Well, a small town outside of Calgary. But yeah, my family's now in Kelowna. Where are you from? Grand Prairie, Alberta. So we're both Albertans too. Stop it. Oh my God, no wonder. <laughs> I'm I'm in Atlanta, and so it's times where I look out, and I'm like, oh, it's sunny, and it's warm out, and Dan's showing me pictures of snow. <laughs> Wait a minute, Dan, so you're actually, so you guys are in Atlanta and Grand Prairie? Yep, absolutely, yeah, I'm I'm in Grand Prairie right now. <laughs> well, it's beautiful here. No, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm frequently jealous of both LA and Georgia, <laughs> as far as weather goes, absolutely. I'm in LA often because my office that I report to is in LA, so I'm always back and forth, but I, I work from home a lot, so. Yeah, for podcasts, I think, I mean, everybody's working from home, I guess, these days, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you get out of the house, too, because you're helping in this whole situation with the COVID-19. Thank God, because I'm not a, I mean, I'm not a homebody. I, 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 I'm a, I have to get out. I, it's, I, just, I love to be outside. I like to hike. I like to be with friends, but um, I have to put that on hold. So what's the next best step? Cooking for people that uh, I could just drop it off and not even go into the facilities, keep my distance from the doctors and nurses. They have their masks on. I have gloves on when I give the food in the parking lot even because I don't want to, you know, we don't want to, I don't want to be walking into the facilities. So everything's done very safe um, with my donation of these amazing meals that I make. I love to cook. So yeah, I mean, that, what, what do you do when you're out of work? You cook, you help, you just give back. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great way to uh, get out of your head because everybody's going through this together, right? I mean, yes, there's a lot of people that are still getting a paycheck and working from home, but half of us aren't. So we have to figure out something where we can give back and, 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 and make people happy. I mean, that's rewarding. And I believe in karma and I believe that um, when you do give, you are going to, you are going to be okay. You're going to, things are going to work out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Things are really going to work out. And that's just what I want to say today is just like, we have to know, we have to trust that it's going to be okay and not live in that fear. Absolutely. Yeah. Because everything really works out. Any pandemic we've ever had in the past, it's always worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're in the middle of it, sometimes it's hard to see that light at the end of the tunnel. But uh, I, I love that there are people volunteering their time and their energy, you know, to make things better. And, you know, like we were saying, doctors and nurses, they have the hardest job right now. I've been reading some testimonials from from some of them, just like the heartbreak that they're seeing and that kind of thing. So it's trauma. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. They're going through something that is going to affect them the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And they're choosing to go in there every day and put their lives at risk and their families are, some of them are like not with their families. You know that, right? They can't go home. So they're giving to the community before their family, which is like, whoa, like that's insane. So that's what I wanted to target. The mostly the medical staff. I've done a few on the front line, but it's mostly geared towards the medical staff because I think they're the ones that are the most in, I guess, danger and they work the hardest. Well, yeah, and it's depressing too. And like you said, it affects their family life. I know a guy that that's doing that. He works at you know a hospital and uh, working 13, 14 hour days, but is sleeping in their basement because they just had a baby when it's a toddler. And the toddler doesn't know to stay away and stuff. So he doesn't really see his family. He's in the same house, but he doesn't really get to see them. But, you know, what a relief for like occasionally somebody might come by and, and give a gift of food like that, you know, because they're on their feet all day. Sometimes they don't even get a chance to eat in any opportunity. What I noticed, I have a few friends in the medical field. What was happening was they were complaining that everyone is giving donuts and cupcakes and fast food. And they're like, no, like you guys, this, this is making us tired. We're crashing from the sugar. And they were get, they were just like, we need nourishment. So that's when I came up with my, my meals because I cook really healthy meals. Um, some of them are vegetarian. Some of them don't want dairy. Some of them want just really healthy meals. And that's what I've been making. And that requires like, yeah, it's easy to go to Chick-fil-A and buy a bunch of stuff and send it over. But you know, these guys want home cook meals to feel like they're home because they're not home. Yeah, definitely. And I'm, I'm looking at your GoFundMe page right now and you've got some videos up there showing what you're doing and the food does look amazing Thank as well. You. So I, I think you're doing a really great thing here and, and we'll have a link to this in the uh, show notes as well. So 
Uh, listeners, please check that out. Please donate if you're able. Uh, this is a definitely a really worthy cause. So uh, what's your experience been so far in providing these meals and what, what kind of feedback are you getting on that? Oh, amazing feedback. I've had strangers donate. I started off on Facebook and I got a lot of donations. So I was really busy the first month and a half, like, like so busy that I had to go to the chiropractor twice because I had, I was chopping so much that I started getting like carpal tunnel syndrome, like all the way up down into my neck and it would create a migraine. So I had to, I had to take a break, you know, and I, so I shut down the thing and I took a break and now I'm back, <laughs> but I didn't want to go back to the same people. I wanted to open it up to my Star Trek fans and do the, like, get a free picture, the green girl or, you know, navigator from of gods and men. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I see that on the page here. So Star Trek fans donating $30 can get a signed autograph from you. And like you said, it, it's the uh, Orion woman you played in bound or the navigator from of, Go of gods and men, or just your own headshot of yourself. Exactly. Like, whatever they want. Yeah. And then I just asked for their address privately, you know, not on, not on Facebook, but on the page that we, and then I'll just send them the photo signed personally for me. It's kind of fun. Why not? I mean, I have all the photos, right. That I use at conventions. Like, like that's going to happen anytime soon. And I'm not asking for, you know, money for myself for, to sell a photo. I'm actually asking, can you guys help me out so I can cook for these guys? Cause I can't do it on my own. That's really what I'm saying. And you get a free photo. And maybe there'll be a food stain on it. And then that's really like, wow, she was cooking at the time. <laughs> I'll just like slap some lasagna on like one of them and be like, oh, sorry, I was uh, cooking while I was signing your autograph. I'm just, <laughs> and that would be a funny video just for, for you guys, like just for the pages, the Star Trek pages, just like be like a, do a funny little video of me cooking and getting something on one of the photos. <laughs> and you're wiping it off and just smearing it and like, yeah, uh... I'm just like it'll be okay. It's, somebody will want this. <laughs> right. Just kidding, you guys. Just kidding. I'm not going to give you this one. It's going to be pretty. It's going to be perfect. Glossy. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> what are your favorite foods to make? Is lasagna one of them or? Not necessarily, no. <laughs> <laughs> lasagna I made because um, I was giving to this hospital in, um, this is called the Motion Picture Fund. Um, it's in Woodland Hills and it's a retirement community, but it's also been completely overrun by the virus. So these, all these, well, elderly people are dying and they can't say goodbye to their families. I mean, it's really bad. And this one uh, physician, her name is Mina. And she said that she, her, her boyfriend is also a physician. That's, he works in uh, North Hollywood and I gave to them. And then I get, she was like, well, what about us? And I was like, okay, I'm giving to you. And she said, well, we're vegetarian. And I said, okay. So the first time I made them, made them tofu lettuce, build your own lettuce cups. Oh, wow. Those are yeah. really fun. With a fried rice, like a beautiful like vegetable fried rice. And then I did, and then they wanted another meal. So I said, you're vegetarian. Why don't I make a vegetarian lasagna? You guys are fine with that. They're like, oh, yes, please. So I did a farro lentil vegetarian eggplant zucchini lasagna. It was really good. It was really good. I was surprised. But yeah, I mean, that, that, actu that actual recipe is quite simple. The real lasagna is a little more like, because you have to cook the meat and, the, you know, it's just, and it's too heavy, I think. I think they want light meals. So I've been doing a lot of like, ooh, I do an amazing pad thai. Ooh, that's my that scores points with me. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it is the most amazing and it's authentic. It's not like the heavy noodles. It's not going to be clumpy. It's not sticky. It's like. It's like crack. <laughs> it's healthy crack. I mean, it's so good. Like every time I make it, I'm just like, my friends are like, oh my God. Like, cause it's just authentic. And I've traveled to these places. So I know how to make these meals. It's fun. That's amazing. Now you're making me wish I was in LA because <laughs> I want to try that. That sounds great. I know, right? <laughs> I can only do so much. Now I wish I was working in a hospital. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to, to get be. this food. So I am surprised like. Are there restrictions at these places that say, no, we don't accept food? Because they, they don't always know you. Cedars was a bit strict when I started reaching out to them in the beginning. But I think they've come down a little bit because it's kind of like, dude, I mean, they have to eat. I mean, yeah, I think some of them were in the beginning, but now it's like, whatever. They want me to tag the hospital. They want me to tag them. 
in so obviously it's okay <laughs> yeah words getting around that you're doing this and yeah and, and i cold. you know i wash my hands constantly like i'm always like i don't cook with gloves on but i'm washing my hands you don't need to if you've washed your hands with soap and water and you're constantly you know being careful with the food i wash the produce before i cook it and uh apparently the virus cannot travel through food anyways so i might as well just be a restaurant that you order from but i'm better <laughs> absolutely so obviously with everything that's going on right now, the you know, sets of course are closed and, and people aren't filming new things. But I was wondering if there is anything that you've done recently that, you know, our listeners would be interested in checking out and maybe seeing what's going on, stuff that you filmed shortly before this or anything like that? Oh, yeah. I did a commercial right in January. It's not out yet. I think it's coming out in June. I can't even remember what I played. I think I played a mom that was dancing in the stands or something. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> it's a funny spot. And then I did a movie for Lifetime, which will be my fourth one. I played the lead. Oh, nice. I'm the villain. Ooh. Yeah. The working <laughs> title is called Nightmare Neighbor. Oh, I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you're the neighbor. Yep. Yep. I'm the Nightmare Neighbor. I play the villain. It's really fun to play the villain. I love it. It's my third villain role for Lifetime. Oh, wow. You, you, you found a, a, a niche to play, <laughs> it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, lately, yeah. I mean, I used to play the good girl for many years. Um, I played the Anaconda movies and all that and I, I always played kind of the not always the good girl I played the vixen the troublemaker and I go back and forth it's fun I like the villain best though I like to play the villain by the way playing the villain you've got so much more freedom and you have to have empathy for the villain you have to understand where they're coming from right look at the joker yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah it's always easy to come up with the motivation for your character if it's a villain too you know You've got to have motivation and you have to have a backstory. And that's your job to create. It's not on the page. So I, I find it just cha more challenging to find these nuances in that role that people will actually feel, feel for me, not just as a killer, but why I'm a killer. What got me to this, to this place? Yeah. It's fun. It's challenge. I like a challenge, you know. Maybe we can get you to play a villain on Star Trek Picard with yes. like Patrick Stewart. Let's, Wouldn't let's, that be cool? Let's do, oh my God, I would love that. Patrick Stewart, that would be a dream. That would truly be a dream. Oh. And then when you run into him on the street one day, you can say, remember I tried to kill you on the show? Yeah, he, he'd remember me because I wouldn't be green, right? Well, you never know. They got to bring the green girls back at some point. Yeah, I had like green in, in places for a long time. A good month, I was like finding green. And I'm like, what is like people would I go on a hike and I put my arm up and they're like, what is on your arm? It's like a green. I'm like, oh, sorry, that's just makeup from what? Oh, I was on Star Trek. They're like, what? <laughs> it was yeah, that was it was years ago, but I remember it. So you mentioned a little bit about uh, doing conventions and that sort of thing. Your experiences with the fans at conventions, and, and I mean, I, I have no reason to expect you to remember this, but I I think I did meet you at Star Trek Las Vegas, and that's where I found out you were from Calgary. Yeah, I think you were, yeah, I think I remember you, yeah. When I see you talking and then I heard the accent, I'm like, wait a minute, I met that guy in, in Vegas. Oh, very cool. So what's it? What's it like doing those conventions and, and meeting the fans? Do you, do you find that they're remembering you, even though, again, you were under so much green makeup? Do fans recognize you that way? or You know, it depends. Like, some people just walk up to my booth and they're like, I never saw that episode. I'm like, what? You have to watch it. It's the best episode of Enterprise. I never really watched Enterprise. I liked this one. And then they get into this whole spiel and then they're like, oh, I should watch it. And then you get the people that know exactly who you are. They come up and they're like, no, you don't have to explain anything. I know exactly who you are. I want, I want this. I want the green girl and I want this one. And I, you know. I'll admit that was probably me. <laughs> <laughs> Canadians know what they want and they're very precise. Absolutely. I didn't even know what was going on when I first went. The three of us went and it was just like we were mobbed and we were charging like, I don't even, I think we pretty much gave most of our pictures away because we didn't know that we could charge a certain amount for the picture. You know, like it was just our, all of our first times. And we were kind of like, okay, I guess that's $20, right? Yeah. And it's just like, it was just a 
kind of, they, I wish we were a little bit more organized, but I think we did make a lot of money that year. Now you're a pro at this. Yeah. Now I'm a pro. Now I'm like, okay, it's this, it's this, you know. Like I said, um, we'll have the link to your GoFundMe in the show, show notes. And I highly encourage people to go there, check it out, donate what you can. I think it's a really worthy cause. And it's been a huge pleasure and a huge honor to have you on the show. And like Bruce said, you're, first, you're, the, you're our first guest. So, so exciting. Oh, I'm so honored. Dan and Bruce, thank you for finding me and noticing you know, the work I'm doing, because that's really what matters right now. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It's lovely. You guys are great. And uh, good luck with your show. I will tune in. Awesome. And we'll keep in touch. Yeah. Perfect. And yeah, I'll send you a link to the uh, discussion group on Facebook as well for the show. So. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to join that group and yeah, and, and get the word out because I'm doing another round now for the, for the staff, the hospital staff. So you guys, I need your help. I need your help. I can cook. I can clean. I can deliver. Everything is done through me alone. I don't have a sous chef. It's just me. So the more uh, donations, the more people will be fed with healthy meals cooked by me. Yeah. Make sure you post that in our, in our Facebook group then, because then people listening to this, that would be another easy way to find it on your GoFundMe page. Now, are you also on Twitter or anything else like Instagram or something? Or yeah. And in fact, I just tweeted about it today about the getting the, for, for specifically for the Star Trek fans. I don't use Twitter as much, but because of this donation thing, I just started using it again. So I, I'm on there. You can find me on there, the GoFundMe. I think I have my Instagram is also, if you go to my bio, there's the link. And then all the Facebook groups, like any type of Facebook group that's like everything Star Trek, Star Trek me memes, I think I'm, I'm in all those groups. So if you're one of those groups, you might see my little donation page there. Yeah, I'm on your Twitter feed now. Yeah, you're at It's Crystal Allen. Yeah, at It's Crystal Allen. There's no apostrophe. It's just It's Crystal Allen, yeah. And then my Instagram is Crystal Allen 13 That's the one I use the most. So if you really want to see what's going on, I do my stories. I do all my food stuff. I also have Crystal Allen Cooks, which is just all recipes and but you can see all the work I've been doing. If you just go to my personal Facebook page, Crystal Allen, I have a fan page and then I just have a regular page that's just for my closest friends. But you can just see all the work I've been doing on my Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, mostly Instagram. Yeah, we'll put links to that in the show notes as well. So people can just click a link, make it really easy. So awesome. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you once again to our wonderful guest, Crystal Allen. You can find links to her social media in the show notes. You can also find this podcast on Twitter. We're at Positively Trek. You can find myself at Kertrats, K-E-R-T-R-A-T-S. You can find Bruce at Admiral underscore Rex. And of course, check out our discussion page on Facebook. You can find that by searching for Positively Trek on Facebook. Ask to be admitted to the group and we'll let you right in. Thank you all so much for listening this week. We really appreciate having you with us, and we'll see you again in next week's episode. Take care, live long and prosper, and be safe.